Greetings, this is Artie from Artifact Electronics. So this is like part two of the refurbishment of this uh, power supply assembly, which originally came from a 1978 Bally Kiss pinball. And last time we cleaned things up, replaced a few connectors, and uh, we did some voltage measurements, but some of the voltages were off. And the reason for that is, is this is not a complete power supply. It's basically the uh, transformer and a rectifier board. And even though some of the voltages are used directly off the rectifier board, others aren't. And some of the voltage, namely the uh, high voltage board for the uh, gas discharge displays, the, it was pretty low. And my guess was that it needs a, capac a smoothing capacitor. And in order to do that, we'll have to bring in another board that handles all of those chores. But first what I've done is I built a, uh, built a small harn harness. I would say it's a minimal harness because my main goal for this is to be able to bench test CPU boards. And uh, in order to do that, I don't need, I mean, there, there are the harness, and you can see there's like wires sticking, unused wires sticking out. Well, the reason for that is, is I uh, use recycled connectors, and I try to reuse what's in there. And I just tied off the ones that I don't need for now. Later on, if I ever decide to complete this, uh, as a bench testing thing that does lights and solenoids and reads buttons and all that, I'm going to need a whole lot more connectors and wires. But instead of cutting the ones, the unused ones off right now, if I leave them in, well, I can reuse them if I ever go complete on the on the harness. So with that said, let's uh, bring in the uh, missing link and set this thing up. Here's a missing link. Bally calls it the solenoid driver board, but uh, it actually does a bunch of voltage regulation and has some other tasks that it handles. So, But we need this in order to get a clean 5 volts out of it. And this also regulates the uh, high voltage, which the input voltage for this, the unregulated voltage, when we measured it, back on the transformer there was kind of low. I think it was about 165 or 170 volts. And the manual says that it should be, where are we? It should be 230 volts. My guess is, of course is that since there was no smoothing capacitor, uh, we saw it low and that should be, that should come up. The high voltage smoothing capacitor is under here. But, uh, yeah, once we hook up power to it, first we'll see if we can get what the 5 volts look like. And then we'll actually stick our fingers into the uh, under the caution high voltage thing here and see if this is actually generating uh, the proper high voltage. Now, 250 is the unregulated. Uh, Bally usually uh, adjusted these or recommended 190 volts. I usually go lower to about 170 or so because even though the displays may be slightly dimmer than with 190 volts, they will last a lot longer with a little lower voltage. So let's have a look see. So when cutting wood, the advice is uh, measure twice and cut once. When building harnesses, measure thrice so you don't blow up anything. I did measure several times before plugging it in and everything looked okay. I mean, yeah, you get to a point where you kind of have to trust the schematics at hand. But if you have any suspicions about what the schematic says, use your meter and buzz out the connections. Make 100% sure that what you, that you're not putting 200 volts into the 5 volt regulator. But we're all hooked up here, and really all we need to check on here is to see, does this generate 
5 volts DC for the logic. And we start up and we just go to the test point on here. And the test point tells us we're a bit high, but again, there's no real load on the uh, 5 volts. It'll probably drop to about 5.1 once the CPU board's connected. So that part's fine. Next, we'll do the high voltage, and for that, we have to remove the uh, thoughtful safety plate that it was provided to us because the test points are underneath it and so is the adjustment potentiometer so you have to take it off to do anything but uh, let's see we're going to need something to adjust we may, may want to adjust the uh, voltage and with that in mind and you know what, let's also get something to clip it on there, so we don't slip in the high voltage section. So let's see. Test point 2, I believe, is the input to the uh, high voltage regulator. And uh, I'll have to verify that here again. And that is incorrect. Test point, what does it say? Test point four. There's a two. And there's four. I had it right. All right, so test point four, the last time we measured it without, basically on, on this board, it was like 165 or 170 volts which is the unregulated high voltage. So now, if we turn this guy on, you can see we now, uh, the uh, smoothing capacitor is doing its job. And uh, the listed voltage is actually what, two, where did it go? It's, it's listed as 230 volts, but again, there's no load on it. So, for the unregulated voltage, we're good. And out of the regulated voltage, I have no idea what this is set to, but it should be in the range of, should be around 190 volts. And it's 170, and that's probably because, well, let's see if it's adjustable. I probably set it to that. And it is. I mean, if we absolutely insisted, we can get 190 volts out of this. But I'm probably going to, let's put it to 175. Don't want the displays to be too dim, but we want them to last. Look at that. All right, so the voltages look fine on here. So the first thing we need to do now is to see if our original purpose of getting a bench test rig set up works. So here we have a CPU board hooked up to it. Uh, another piece of advice I have is label your connectors or and, and label the harness because you don't think about it when you're doing it but uh, I got a box full of harnesses. Half of them are not tagged and uh, I have no idea what, what they're for probably figure it out but it would probably be faster for me to rebuild those uh, for, for whatever purpose I need a harness for rather than trying to figure out what those were for. So documentation is great. Uh, I have the uh, connectors labeled. I still got to put a label on the harness that tells me what it really is. So anyway here's your uh, CPU board and uh, we're not, we're not going to get into a deep discussion on the board, but what we are looking for is we're just kind of getting checking to see if this thing boots up. It's got a power on self-test, or post as it's called in PCs, and that makes this thing blink, this green LED blink seven times. It's checking ROM, different RAMs, 
the PIA 6821s, and it's also checking for external interrupts because it actually uses the power line to generate 120 hertz interrupt and an onboard 555 that generates, what is it, like a 384 hertz interrupt that is used to refresh these displays and lamps and that kind of stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to need a lot more wires on here to be able to bench test lamps and displays and uh, other goodness like that. But what I really want is to have something, if I'm dealing with a board or with software or something, uh, to see if the post does its job. Because at that point I know that basically the board has booted up successfully and whatever other problems exist after that uh, can most likely be fixed by putting the board in the machine. But to do the bench testing for when this thing just doesn't want to boot up gets kind of cumbersome to have to stuff it into the back box of a machine, run the wires, and bend over, and stick your fingers in there. This, this is a lot easier. So uh, again, we're going to power this thing up and keep your eyes on this guy. And Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. It came up. It is actually using three or four different voltages from over there to come up because it has a power good. Uh, it has a power good circuit over here that generates the reset signal. Has a regulated five volts, of course. It has the solenoid 45 volts coming in that is uh, <clears throat> rectified and runs through a zero crossing detector on here to generate one of the interrupts. And, okay, <clears throat> so I guess it's got three voltages coming in. But, just for grins, let's do it one more time. And it does its stuff. So this is about as far as we can go with testing the harness and the transformer. Uh, I mean, it's not only for the CPU board, but I can also, if I have bad solenoid driver boards, I can test the voltage generation on here in this bench setup. I obviously can't test uh, the uh, solenoid drivers, which these transistors are. Well, I can test the transistors dry, but for real life, these need to go into a machine that has all of the solenoids. And of course, I can also test other power supplies because I have a known good setup now and we should be able to replace any component in the chain uh, to verify that it works correctly. But we do need to make a more conclusive test. And here's the ultimate test setup the machine itself. I was once talking to an experienced pinball tech oh, a few years ago when you could still buy this stuff somewhat cheap and I really wanted a tester, a board tester, because Bally made a whole set of testers, one for each of these boards in there and he said he didn't have one and I asked him, I said, uh, well what do you use for testing? And he turns around and points at a at a Bally machine sitting there and says this is the best tester and uh, he was right so if the uh, power supply manages to power this up I think that's final validation so as you can see there is the uh, old power supply in here it's almost identical to the one we fixed except this doesn't have the uh, big diodes on top here but rather an extra underpowered 8 amp bridge. So what I'm going to do is take that whole assembly out, put the repaired one in in its place, and uh, let her rip. Okay, the transplant was completed. I left the uh, all the covers off in case smoke starts rising when I turn it on. But uh, yeah, there we have it. I'm going to turn the light off so you could see the green LED blinking, but maybe I'd better leave it on so in uh, case of smoke I might have a better idea of where it's coming from. 
Anyway, the uh, green LED is over... Where is it? I can't find it. It's over here. So, watch closely. Three, two, one. Alright, so far so good. No magic smoke, no plain smoke, no smoke. Let's see if the displays are working. And they are. Alright, we have to play a quick game. All right, quick game. Sorry about the glare, but uh, let's just see if she does what she's supposed to. Looks like all the lights are on. so good. Let me know if you see smoke coming out of anywhere. like she survived. When you do a transplant of a power supply, especially one that is wired like this one, there's always some uncertainty, but if you checked thrice, then usually you end up with a working game. And now I get to service this guy. That's the one that came out of the Playboy. Looks relatively clean. It's got some lamp cord here, so I gotta take care of that. Notice that this doesn't have the two large uh, dual diode rectifiers over here, but rather a third bridge mounted underneath like the other two. And if we look at that a little bit more closely, we can see that this was burned up pretty good too. And I guess that prompted the engineers at Bally to replace the 8 amp bridge with the heavy duty diodes in the TO3 case so that wouldn't happen again. But there you have it. Thanks for watching. Click on all the right things and uh, comment to your heart's content. We'll see you next time.